So you're bored with reptiles. What's that mean? Is there a way that you can reinvigorate your passion or maybe is it time to hang it up, sell the collection and move on to something else? Are you done with reptiles? <sighs> nope. I think there are a ton of ways that you can reinvigorate your love for reptiles or whatever it is. It is completely normal to feel burnt out, to feel like you don't want to do it anymore and you've got a big reptile collection or maybe just one or a few and it's becoming more of a job than it was a hobby before. So let's just go over a few ways that you can reinvigorate or reimagine your love for these amazing creatures that you've already got. I'm Adam, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. If your hobby is building race cars, and that's what you do on Saturdays with your buddies or your dad or whatever, and you get frustrated, you can throw your wrench in a box because you lost your million, 10 millimeter socket and you don't want to touch it for two months. That's fine. If you do drone photography like I do, and you don't want to do it, you don't want to put a drone in the air for three months, no one cares. It doesn't matter. But if you've got a reptile collection and you don't go into the reptile room for three months, well, these are living, breathing things. You can't just do that. So you've got an option. You can either reinvigorate your love for these things and make it feel like it's fun to be in there, or you can get rid of them. But let's go through a bunch of ways that you don't have to do that. I think maybe the easiest way is pretty simple. Take a reptile, handle it. Walk into your reptile room and handle some stuff that maybe you haven't handled in a while. For example, my crested geckos, I almost never handle. To me, they feel more fragile and delicate than a ball python or a leopard gecko. But when I go in there and I start handling one of them, I remember like, oh, I love these things. They feel so cool and they'll like lick their eyes and they'll jump from my hand to hand or whatever. And to me, I just think that's what really brings it back for me. Even hognose snakes, they've got a cool keeled scale. So for me, when I touch them, it kind of lets me reimagine, oh yeah, this is why I fell in love with this species in the first place. What you can do as well is bring in something else that you've got a passion for into your reptile room. So if you like building things, build a cool enclosure, right? I've got some custom enclosures and some racks that I built by myself with my dad. And it was fun because I like to build things or take pictures, right? I started a YouTube channel because I love videography and I love photography. So now I've got a reptile room and I can share it with you guys because you watch this channel. So for me, I get to do two things and I always have one of them that I'm not bored with. Now, I haven't been bored with reptiles in a long time and I did get reinvigorated three or four years ago and we'll get into that in a, in a bit how I did that. But for now, I mean, take some pictures, get a camera, take some pictures, even your cell phone, whatever, make a new Instagram account for one of your reptiles. Maybe you've got this really cool carpet python or maybe you've got an albino ball python and you love this animal and people just kind of look at it like, what the heck is that? Show it off, wear it around your wrist, kind of frame the shots interestingly so that it's not just the snake, but maybe it's something different in the background. If you're into photography, use a different lens or different lighting or use some shadows, do something to make it more fun for you and you're gonna have a love for that animal because that is the subject of what you're taking pictures of. This works for drawing as well. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you like to paint things or draw things or maybe you don't like taking pictures or sawing wood or you know, painting, whatever. Maybe you like decorating though. So if you've got a crested gecko or even a ball python and leopard gecko, make a bioactive enclosure. So you buy something, you buy a glass uh, enclosure or someone builds you an enclosure, right? And you get the substrate and you get the bio drain, whatever you use, and then the, the little mesh to make sure that it doesn't leak through, right? And it's gonna be fun because you're gonna be researching this as well. And then you get all the plants and then you get the light and then maybe you get a misting system. And you just go all out and get crazy and get a background and you do a custom background maybe with you know the great stuff, spray and the silicone and stuff like that. And then now you've got something that's amazing to look at. It's beautiful for you to look at. And now you've re reinvigorated your love for your Caressa geckos, whatever, ball python, whatever it is. You've done something to make you want to look at it again because now it's different and the novelty hasn't worn off. And with bioactive enclosures, a lot of the times, if that's what you choose to do, those things can 
continue to change. So you're not going to have the novelty wear off as much as if you just put a leopard gecko in a 10 gallon with reptile carpet, which you shouldn't use by the way, in a water bowl and a couple of hides. That kind of stays the same and gets boring to look at after a while. But what if you're not a producer? What if you don't like to produce things? You like to consume. That's what you do. But when you first loved reptiles, when you first got them, you went into your reptile room and you sat there and you looked at them and you just consumed. That is fine too. Not everybody has to start a YouTube channel or an Instagram account or make reptile cages, whatever. Just consume. Watch channels like this one or there's lots of great reptile channels out there. Watch a National Geographic special, whatever. It's, watch something on YouTube, on the internet, whatever, or even a book. Get a book about your crested gecko, your boa constrictor, whatever it is that you've got that you feel like you lost a step, a little bit of interest, do more research on it. Maybe you'll find out something brand new. I've been keeping leopard geckos for years, for over a decade, and I, I find out new stuff all the time. So that maybe is something that will bring over your love back for your animals. Maybe you're someone who liked the risk or the danger when you first got a reptile and it was striking at you, you got a baby Colombian rainbow boa, Brazilian rainbow boa, whatever, a baby anaconda, whatever it is that you've got, and it was striking at you and that's what turned you on to it, but now it's tame, it's docile, because you did the work and you're good at that. Share that with somebody else. If I knew someone in my area that could help me with my red tail boa, with my, or my BCI rather, I would have that person over in a heartbeat to come and handle it and show me. There's things that I'm great with uh, with reptiles, but there's other things such as handling five foot snakes. It takes me a little bit more time than maybe someone like you who doesn't mind having them strike at you as much as I do. So maybe that's a way to do it is share your skill or your talent with taming a reptile or if you want to work with other reptiles that you don't have because that's the thing is you don't want to go out and buy something new if you're bored. That's like those couples who start fighting and then have a baby and think everything's going to be fine. That's a really weird tangent to go on. But you know what I mean? You don't want to get something that you have to be responsible for because you're bored and think it's going to make it all better. It's not. It's not going to make it all better at all. Instead, go out and buy a new terrarium. Go out and buy new plants to put in it or new hides to make it look different. Or if you're one of those creative people that like to take pictures, go out and buy something brand new to take pictures with. So that's what I did. I got bored with shooting the way that I was shooting, went and got a new camera, and now I've got a converter so I can use all the EF and EFS lenses uh, on the Canon. So go out and buy yourself something new, but not an animal. Okay, back. But at the end of the day, maybe your love is over, or you need to thin the collection at least a little bit. Maybe you don't mind the leopard gecko, and maybe, you know what? All in all, this isn't an interest thing, but your lifestyle has changed and you don't know how to take care of what you've got. Maybe you can keep the leopard gecko or the crested geckos because it only requires you to do something every two or three days where your Colombian rainbow or Brazilian rainbow boa or Irian Jaya blue tongue skink needs to be misted every day and you go on business trips. So just kind of figure out what you're able to do and maybe get rid of the ones that you just can't care for properly anymore because of a time restraint or just because you don't want to do it. And before we get to the negative Nancy, get rid of all your reptile speech, here's what reinvigorated me. I went to a reptile expo, my first one. I've always loved reptiles since I was a kid. That's all I watched. I finally got my first reptile when I was old enough to be paying rent to my parents' house and said, well, if I pay to live here, this thing's gonna live here too. But then it took several years, probably like seven or eight years, something like that, before I could go to a reptile expo or I knew that they were around or someone told me to go to one, whatever it is. I don't remember how I got there, but I remember being there. I think it's one of those things where you just gotta try a bunch of different things and if none of those work, now we get to the negative Nancy. Get out, man. <laughs> just get out. We see it all the time on Craigslist or Kijiji Facebook Marketplace where someone is selling their entire collection. They're done. Getting out of the hobby. Moving across the country. I got kids now. Whatever it is for you that makes you not want to do it anymore, just don't do it anymore. That's it. Don't let these animals suffer. As soon as you realize that these animals are not being taken care of the way that they probably should or the way that they used to be or not 100% at all, start getting rid of stuff. And don't worry about the money. Just get rid of them because they're going to be in a better place than with you who doesn't really have the interest anymore. But there is nothing wrong with that. You're doing the right thing. I guess the message for the video, change it up. And if changing it up over and over doesn't do it, get out. That's it. 
find something else. I hope this video helped you. Everybody feels like this sometimes, and I think if you keep trying, you'll find a way to reinvigorate your love for reptiles. Put in the comment section below, has this ever happened to you? What have you done about it? If you like this video or felt like it helped you at all, hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you